Hey guys, it's Erin here with Simply Living. Happy February. And if anybody follows Punxsutawney Phil, he did not see his shadow, which means we only have six weeks until spring. Woohoo! So with that being said, we are heading into probably my favorite but most challenging uh, month as far as our little yearly challenge is going here. I know we just started in January, but January was kind of cool. You got to see what money you brought in, where you wanted your money to go, and establish that budget and routine financially so that you and your family can really get into the game this month in February. So our theme for February is frugal February. I like the play on words. There you go. So with frugal February, the idea is that you do not spend money unless you have to. So of course, we all have some expenses that we have to just give in. They're just there and you, you have to pay for them. So those of you with childcare like us, of course, you know, we have to, we have to pay for that. Car payments, mortgage, groceries, anything that you cannot go one month without having, you must pay for. But if you make like a monthly trip to the nail salon, do you really have to go? Uh, if you get a monthly haircut, do you really need to go? It's things like that that we start to learn how to live without. Um, maybe you can do your nails at home. Maybe if you're a guy, your wife could cut your hair or your girlfriend or your mom or whoever. Somebody can help you with that. And the idea here is that you're taking what your goals are from January and you're taking that budget and you're going to really see just how far you can stretch your dollar. And the one thing that my husband and I do pretty regularly now, it's actually become more of a comfort for us, is we just don't buy anything during the week. And so Saturday, Sunday, if it's not part of our purchasing during the weekend, we don't buy it. And that's really especially important for groceries. I don't know how many times my husband has gone out to the store and just randomly bought stuff and then we can't even account for it later. It's like in the moment we think we need it and then we go back and we're like, why didn't we just use what we had? And some of my friends say the same thing. They'll say, we just randomly buy stuff and we can't even figure out where this money is going. And so the idea behind Frugal February is to really figure out that your budget is going to work for you and you might even be able to stretch that budget a little, a little bit more. And so the reason that we're doing that is to help build that confidence that you really do have the money. Like it's there. You just have to know how to make it work for you. And so anything that is not a necessity in the month of February don't buy it. And I picked February for this, not just because it starts with an F and so does frugal and it's cute, but I also thought about the fact that February is probably one of the most boring months of the year. I mean, let's just be honest. If you live in a colder climate, it's cold, it's snowy, there's not a whole lot going on, and it's short. Now, of course, this year it's 29 days instead of 28, but still, it's the shortest month of the year, it's usually the coldest month of the year, and it's just easier to stay home. It's one of those months where you don't mind just being at home. Excuse my dogs. They're playing on the deck. Sorry. So that's what our rationale was behind this. It's also really important, I think, too, that once you've established that budget, if you spend a month just being really, really careful about your spending, you're going to be able to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that you are going to be able to meet the goal that you have set for yourself and your family. And so I think that's really important to have happen right after you've established that budget, because if you don't see the benefit right away, we're so used to this immediate, like, it has to happen right now or we're discouraged. And so I think this is a really good way for everybody to see it's going to work for you. You just have to have some discipline. Now, of course, taking a step back for a second, everybody likes to go out and have fun. We all have friends that want to hang out, and sometimes our schedules don't work, and maybe February was the one month you guys agreed that you could see each other because January was a bust. My advice to you in that regard, if you really do have some social events that you cannot get out of or that you really feel are important, because, I mean, honestly, like we have to remain happy too. Spending money doesn't mean spending tons and tons of it. And saving money doesn't mean you never ever get to do anything. There has to be a happy balance. And so I'm a firm believer in remaining happy because if I'm not happy, I'm probably going to find a different way to make myself happy. And that might be to go to the store and buy 
a really cute maternity dress that I can't afford right now because I'm pregnant and I want to look cute. <laughs> so spending time with my girlfriends is one way that I like to be entertained and be happy. And so a couple of my girlfriends and I could not make it work in January, just could not get our schedules to match. So we planned in January a night out in February. And so with that being said, I've already budgeted for that. I know how much I'm allowed to spend and that's what I'm going to stick to. So I think if you're unable to get out of some certain commitments, if there's something that you've already paid for, that's fine. If there's something that you know is coming up that you're going to have to spend money on and you just can't get out of it, that's okay too, but make sure that you've got a very strict budget for that particular event. Um, and then this way you don't feel like it's all for nothing. But the main idea behind this whole month is to not buy anything that you don't absolutely need. And I think that's super important. We learn in elementary school. I'm a teacher. I teach, I used to teach this when I taught second grade. We teach wants versus needs. And somewhere along the way, it's almost like we forget what is really a want and what's really a need. And so I think as adults, it's important to kind of take a step back and train our brains again that not everything that we have is a need. And so it's really important to remember that. So I think this is really going to be helpful with that. And I really, really hope that if you are following with me on this and you follow my husband and I, that we'll be able to share with you at the end of the month just how much money we saved by not spending. And I'm super excited because we have this one loan that is just nagging at us. It's like, yeah, pay me off, pay me off. And we're just ready to be done with it. So I'm really excited to see how much we're going to be able to save that we can put towards that at the end of the month. And I am really excited for all of you because I truly hope that you also see the benefit of being a little more frugal and not spending a ton of money. And when I talk about frugal, I just want everybody to understand, I don't mean to start like the extreme cheapskate stuff. I don't mean anything like that. I mean more of how you're spending your money. Um, of course, being more careful with certain things at home does help with the expenses, but I think in general, if we just all kind of cut back on what we're buying, we will see a huge difference just in that alone. So let's do that. And if you are gonna follow along, leave a comment down below and let me know and then keep me updated. And at the end of the month, I will come back and share with you how much money we have saved. Bye guys.